hello ladies welcome to my channel I'm making this um, video today for um, our group anything and everything Christian swap group and I'm going to show you how I make envelopes um, at home pretty much homemade okay uh, not necessarily any measurements required and you could do this with any uh, card that you have or an envelope that you're trying to create uh, to package something uh, with a piece of paper but here I have a sheet of paper that is 12 by 12 and uh, we have a swap going on in our group and it's for slimline cards and I've already created the base of my card and I've added uh, the layers that I want to use for my card it doesn't have any embellishments and it doesn't have a, a sentiment and at this point in time if I know that I'm going to make something that is very flat it's okay for me to go ahead and make the envelope but if I know that I'm going to use some embellishments then um, it requires for you to make your card first and then create your envelope um, in our swap we're not going to have to decorate it. We're just doing the base of the slimline card and it's going to be swapped with partners as is. Um, and maybe we can add in a separate envelope uh, embellishments if we want to. So, uh, and it's required to. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you what I do sometimes with packages you know, or like a card like this. I take the item, whatever it is piled up, and then I just fold and crease. Uh, and I'm going to do pretty much that here for the slimline card because this is for our swap. Uh, what I did was I got a piece of uh, paper that is flexible. And the reason when you're creating envelopes you don't want to use heavyweight cardstock is because it's going to cost you a little bit of more money to mail it because the weight of the paper folded and whatever it is that you're going to enclose in it it's going to weigh it a little bit more so um it's best to use you know scrapbooking paper as you can see i have a crease there but i want to show you what i what you could do at home um really it doesn't require much measurements but you can take a ruler and you can place it and for the slimline card, I'm going to be using 9 inches. And I'm going to place this here. And I'm going to go to my first little line here. And this measures 9 inches, which is what I need exactly for this. So I already had folded it, but what I do is I just take a pencil mark and I put one in the bottom one on the top of the nine and then I bring the paper up you know we all have rulers in the house somewhere uh, the issue is the paper trimmers uh, not everybody has a big paper trimmer so I'm gonna mark that at the nine inch mark and you know I use pencil because pencil is easy to erase if you need to but I don't have to so I'm gonna set my ruler to the side and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for that little mark and you could do it in the outside I did it on the outside here where you're gonna fold it so what I did was I brought the paper to where I had the pencil mark and the pencil mark on the top pencil mark on the bottom and I tried to position my paper that it's evenly and then I just went ahead and I creased it after I did that or well, after you do that if you trust yourself you can just go ahead and cut at the nine inch mark because it's already marked and there's some paper stuck in my scissors and I'm just gonna cut straight up to that line and you know try to do it as straight as possible um, the next thing is I'm gonna take my card and I'm going to try to place it in the center, you know, visualize it in the center that I have the same spacing on this side and the same spacing on the other side. 
and I'm going to bring it down to the bottom where it's going to have a very small amount because this is going to be the top of my envelope and this is going to be the bottom of my envelope. Now on this side is solid pink and on this side it has some lines uh, sort of kind of di directional but if you were going to mail this uh, when you're creating your envelope and I will show you what I mean um, you can still put the label here and it doesn't matter which way um, your paper is facing so you have to be really careful what kind of paper you are using if you have double sided paper or if you have white paper on one side and printed on the other you know that's totally entirely up to you and is your choosing I'm going to show you something um, that I made and I'm going to tell you why sometimes directional paper doesn't work. Uh, I had made this one for my slimline card and I know I'm getting a little bit deviated from where I started. Um, I created this envelope and this is what this envelope is going to look like. And even though that it doesn't match my card because this is something that I had done before, as you can see, my card fits in there perfectly. I have a smaller flap on the bottom and a bigger flap on the top. And you see how that worked. I also, another thing that I did was I took a regular size 9 envelope and with the leftover paper that I had, the slithers that I had from here, I decorated the outside of a regular white envelope. So um, it's up to you the direction that you want to go and you want to do. Um, I'm going to show you something because when you use directional paper this can happen. So I went ahead and I did this one. This one I'm going to be using it even though that is a slim line I'm going to be using it just to send to the person and more than likely I'm going to put a paper clip and attach something else on the top and it's going to go inside the swap that I am doing. So when she gets it, she's going to be able to see it this way. But if you were to mail it, uh, put it in the mail, your hearts are going to be sideways. So that's what I mean about the directional, uh, you know, being cautious. So you don't want this, your hearts to be sideways. You would want your hearts to be a different way. So you have to uh, play with that whenever you're going to use directional and the other thing that you need to keep in mind is that in the back you're going to have your hearts facing different ways too. So, you know, directional paper is a little bit more tricky for you to create envelopes. So, you want to get something a little bit more abstract or something that um, the card that I have that I showed you, well, that's one of the ones I made. Where's the card? <laughs> I could lose things so quickly on my desk, but the card is inside the envelope here that I had made. You know, paper like this, it's great for you to create an envelope like the one that I have on top of the card because, uh, you know, there's flowers everywhere and they're going every way possible, so you won't have a problem creating an envelope for that. This one just worked out beautifully. Uh, it was it wasn't something that I that I measured because the idea of showing you how to make this is you don't have to worry about measuring but also look at your options so I showed you that and this is my card that I'm going to be using this is another one that I did uh, I'm just gonna put that back let me set it to the side over here if you have a paper trimmer you can just go ahead and take your 12 by 12 paper and you can go ahead and measure your your paper to a size 9. I always have a problem with this thing. You know, you put it in, in your cutter, your 12 by 12. You know, you put it against the top because that way you know that your cut is going to be even. You're going to take it to the 9 inch mark. Let me this way. Nine inch mark, and you go ahead and you cut it. Okay? That's if you have a big trimmer. So, if you don't, then you can use the ruler. 
So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take I'm going to take my card and place my card in the center of the paper. It's nine inches going across, and it's a uh, twelve by twelve this way. And I'm going to go ahead. Well, it's not 12 by 12. It's 12 inches this way and 9 across. <laughs> Let me correct that. I don't want to confuse anybody. And what I do is I bring my card to the center as much as possible that I can visualize that it looks like it's centered. And then I'm going to bring it down because I want the bottom to, to be the smaller flap of the envelope. I'm going to take my card and I'm going to press it and then I'm just going to go ahead and crease. And this should be even here and it should be even on the top. Then I'm going to flip it over. You really don't have to flip it over. I'm going to leave it just like that just to show you. And then I'm going to bring this over as close, not, not very close, but as close as I can get it because I want to make sure that this crease here is a little bit more in the center um, than anything. You know, as close as possible as you can get it to the center. I just go ahead and I crease it with my hands. If I want a more set crease, then I just go ahead and I burnish all corners. And as you can see, when I open it, my card is going to be in there. There's going to be a smidgen here and a little smidgen there. Why did I do that? Because I don't know the person that's going to get my card. How are they going to decorate it? Are they going to use pop-ups? Are they not going to use uh, pop-up tape? Uh, are they going to raise their uh, sentiment? Uh, are they going to add dimensional flowers? So I'm giving that person a little bit of lead way for them to go ahead and um, embellish the car a little bit better. So with that being said, I'm going to bring this back down to where I want it. And I'm going to close my flaps. You know, you can pretty much measure how high you want it to be on the top. And the smaller flap is on the bottom okay so I greased it on both sides I burnished it and then I'm going to take and I'm going to find my card and I, I use my nails a lot I just cut them all off I had them real long you can take your bone folder against the card you know where it's at and you can just make a line straight down okay so you know that's going to be your crease. Then you go to the next side and you find your card again. And my card is around here somewhere. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so I found it. I'm using my nail. I'm telling you I use my nails all the time. My nails are my best tool. So I have it right there. And here I've creased it with my bone folder. Um... You could give yourself a little bit of lead weight. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to match it up. Make sure that it's even and straight. And I'm going to take my bone folder and I am going to burnish it. Flip it this way and I'm going to burnish it. Then I'm going to go where I made the crease against the card. And I am going to flip it up. And it's going to be a little bit uneven here, but that's going to go that's not going to stay there and I crease it again give it a good crease on both sides so then that way I can see where I'm going to cut and as you can see this may have you know the angle or the chevron this is the kind of paper that I don't like to use um, because it just sort of kind of like sets off my vertical so it was on my stash of ugly paper it's a pretty paper, but for me, I, I just cannot use it. But anyhow, no matter which way you, you flip it, it, it looks good. And when you put your label here to send it out, if you're going to just send one card out, 
you know, it you can put the label anywhere you want. I could do it over here, or I could flip it and put it over here. Uh, and when the person gets it, normally, you know, they have a tendency to open them anywhere. But for me, directional, I like to have the Vega flap on the top of the card. So then that way it comes out that you can take it out that way. Uh, so now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my card out of here because I'm going to be doing some cutting. And you could do this one or two ways. You can, and I'm going to do both ways, but I'm going to use, use it on different angles, different sides. Um, if you decide to snip the sides, then you want to snip the sides down here. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to do one side one way. And how I do this, the bigger one, is I just cut it at an angle. Okay? Then I flip it over because I'm visual and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it. And there is my big flap. Then I'm going to take my leftover paper. I'm going to open this and right at the crease I'm going to put my scissors and I'm going to cut it to that end. Then I'm going to flip it and again i'm going to put my scissors on the crease and i'm going to cut straight across and you're going to end up with something like this and that is your top flap you would do the same thing on the bottom down here but i want to show you a little bit different on the bottom end this envelope it doesn't really matter it's my envelope and i could do whatever i want with it if you want to use a corner punch, um, you know, we all have different ones. So this is an old one that I have and I keep it on my desk and I just go right ahead and I clip my corner. I round my corner um, and I'm going to do the same thing here and put it in my corner punch and, and press. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. You see how it is shaped? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to put it in this little indent right here and I'm going to cut. That's if you, and, and I'm showing you this because not everybody has a corner punch, okay? That's why I did my flap differently on this side. And then again, I'm going to put my scissors in the indent here and at the crease in the center of the scissors and I'm going to take it to that folding line okay and then I'm going to take this in put the crease on my scissors and cut straight across okay if you may end up with a little smidgen almost nothing like I did there you can go back and you can trim it a little Okay, like I did, that's if you trust yourself. And then I'm going to flip it over here, put it on my scissors, it's the best way, and clip the corners off. And there is two ways that you can do your envelope, um, your corners. Round it, or you can cut them in an angle if you trust yourself. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead. I have a little belly here, almost nothing where I started with the scissors. I'm going to take that little smidgen off. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue my envelope. As you can see, this flap is a little bit longer. Uh, so I'm going to put that one under. And this one is more in the center. You know, if you centralize your envelope, if you put your envelope right in the center, more than likely both ends are going to be the same but now what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to go ahead and close my envelope so i'm going to add glue to this end you can use double-sided tape or you can use um regular glue you know it depends what kind of paper you are working with now if you're working with ve vellum paper I don't recommend for you to use wet glue because 
it's going to warp your envelope. So I, I put it on both edges, on this side and that side, and then I'm going to take, in this case, the this one is the bigger one, I'm going to place it on top, and I'm going to seal my envelope. And as you can see, I just put glue on the envelope. See my crease is under there? And over here, my crease is right under there. Right at the edge. So I'm going to make sure that everything is glued together. And then I'm ready to close my envelope. If you like the slanted here and the rounded corner and you have a corner punch, punch you can use it but if you don't you can cut both ends just as I did here or if you have uh, a corner round punch you can just leave them and just slice them at the crease and use your punch okay so I'm just I was just trying to do two combinations in one to make it easy for you uh, to show you both options and only using one piece of paper. I don't have much um, book scrapping paper because when you're making your envelopes, like I mentioned before, if you use cardstock, it's going to weigh your envelope a little bit more when you're mailing it and you can end up paying a little bit of more postage. Whereas if you use something that is flexible like this, that is very similar to a regular number nine envelope that we have and we mail our letters then you shouldn't have a problem so here is my envelope completely done let me take this card it's another one similar i'm going to slide it in there and then i can close it and see there is my card so if you have any questions you know how to find me uh, this is one way of you creating an envelope for any card. Uh, for the slim line, I use 9 inches. For another card, you can take the 12 by 12 or a smaller piece of paper. You can use, um, let me see, if you're making a regular card that is, what, 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half, there's a good possibility that you can use an 8 by 10 paper to create your envelope and do exactly the same thing. But this video is mainly geared because we have the slimline card and envelope um, video um, swap. And this is going to help you if you don't have, um, if you're not very good with measurements or uh, if you want to do it homemade and you don't want to be uh, scoring, using scoring lines and following um, any number direction, this is how I do my envelopes. 90% uh, of the time, even for packages that I'm putting in a swap, if I am creating an envelope, this is how I make them. I just get me one big piece of paper that I can fold over, cut it, and then I do this. So this works for a lot of things aside of slimline cards. But for slimline cards, you're going to need to have it cut the 12 by 12 straight down at 9 inches. Okay, so um, you know how to find me. Um, I hope you like this video. I hope it helped. Um, and you learn something from it don't forget to press like on the way out my card slides in and out with no problem um, hit like if you don't like the video by all means please hit you don't like and make a comment telling me what you didn't like about the video because this helps me in the future whenever I'm making other videos how to improve uh, what I need to do different uh, in my video so thank you so much for watching I hope it was uh, educational enough for you and it's going to help you with your slimline cards envelopes and if you have any questions find me on Facebook uh, under Edna Alvarado um, 
I am the one with the picture with my husband and I. Um, you should be able to find me with no problem. Uh, and if you're in the group, um, more likely we are friends. You're more than welcome to reach out to me there. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.